Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do some initial setup for a brand new instance of Project Online. So this is the landing page for Project Online. It's actually got the project for the web here where we can create new projects in Project for the web here, which is kind of like a lightweight tool to build out project schedules. You can see my other videos on Project for the web and the introduction to that. You can also build out new roadmaps from here. We'll talk about that later. What I'm going to do is jump straightly to Project Online. So at the bottom you can see go to Project Online. So this is the landing page. As soon as you get a license for Project Online, this is where you'll sit. And I haven't done absolutely anything to this environment just yet. So we are at stage zero. What do we do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is go up to the gear icon in the top right hand corner and click PWA settings. In PWA settings is where we see everything behind the scenes that your administrators will use to configure Project Online. If you don't see this page with all of these tabs here, you don't have permissions to do so. So you're obviously not set up as a Project Online administrator. You'll need to speak to your Office 365 administrator to get permissions to be able to see and do this. All right, once we are in, first thing I'm gonna do is click on additional server settings. A couple of little things I like to do in here. First thing, switch to project permission mode. It used to be elsewhere, now it's right here within the additional server settings. Project permission mode allows you to have a more granular security module rather than inheriting SharePoint permissions. We're gonna actually gonna build out our own security module right within project web app. The reason we do this is to give nice granular security so that we can say a project manager can do this, but they can't do that for a selection of projects or resources, for example. All right, a couple of other settings in here. Do we want to allow master projects to be saved and published? Master projects is essentially a project that contains sub projects within it. As an organization, you might want to decide whether you want to allow that. Do you want to allow projects to use local base calendars or not. What that allows you to do is, as an organization, you can specify that everybody's gonna use, let's say, the USA calendar, but they have the ability to overwrite those calendars. All right, when we get into this, we're actually gonna build out what's called enterprise calendars. So what we're gonna do as an organization is figure out where do we do business? Maybe it's in the US, in the UK, in India you will build out enterprise calendars for each of those different regions and you will force that people to leverage those calendars. Those calendars will be set up by the administrator. They'll contain exception days, like when is the public holidays that our company is going to observe in the US versus the UK. And they'll also contain the working hours for those particular regions. What this setting allows you to do is overwrite that and say, I want to have my own, own new calendar. Some organizations allow it. To be honest, as a rule, I would say, if we're gonna set Project Online up, let's have that governance over it. Let's make people use their own calendar. So I would not check that box, but you could potentially. Allow projects to be published in various currencies. As a rule, it's always good to have one base currency and that for from an accounting perspective, if your company's based in the UK, you'd probably wanna switch this to pounds. If it's US, you wanna stick with dollars. Resource capacity view. This allows you to go into the future and see how people are assigned. What essentially it does is it's setting up the reporting table so that you can see 12 months ahead, one month behind, and it won't capture much information outside of that. So if you need a, a, you know to look ahead three years at a time, pretty much unlikely because things are gonna change significantly by, by then. You could set this up to say 36 months ahead. You can also keep that from previous months from a resource capacity standpoint. I'm going to look at those views in the resource center as we get into this. Manually scheduled tasks can be published to team members. I hate manually scheduled tasks. You can see my videos on task planning. I'll put a video up right here now for that. I always uncheck this. What this will now do is say that if we have a manually scheduled task, it can't be published to a team member, therefore they won't see any tasks in their timesheet that are manually scheduled. I also make default 
for all tasks to be automatically scheduled. This is going to engage the project scheduling engine. Users can override the default in Project Professional. Oh, let's take that out. Now, the way I see this, if you're in an organization trying to adopt Project Online, you're trying to adopt the scheduling engine. Essentially, we're enforcing people to use it. A thing that I don't like about Microsoft Project, when they introduced manually scheduled tasks back in 2010, they made manually scheduled tasks the default. I get the reasons behind it. It was to get people kind of engaged with the product, make it more Excel-like, but manually scheduled tasks essentially turns off the scheduling engine, and I don't like that. All right, uh, one of the other things here is turn on notifications. At this point, when we're first starting out, let's not do that. So if we have users in here that go in and create tasks and assign somebody, when they publish their schedule, that person would potentially get a notification. We'll come back and turn on notifications should we want to. But essentially, it'll opt people in to receive email notifications that a task has been assigned to them, their timesheet's been approved or rejected, etc., etc. I'm going to leave that off for now. And I'm going to press save. So that is the additional server settings, something that I do straight away, one of the first things I do when I get into Project Online. Press save. And we are good. We can now see that we now have the new security section. We're gonna have a whole section on this, but we're gonna essentially be able to manage users, groups, categories, etc all right this is video one in a long series can't wait to get started with you guys